There's nothing better than a Saturday special. That's why you're tapped back in to your daily source for fantasy hockey news. It's the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast. A whole lot to get to on today's special episode. We're taking a look at all the news from around the league. Streak snaps, post tickets. Fucked up. Doing it again. We back. It's a Saturday special of your source for fantasy hockey news. It's the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast. And we are covering all of the top trending news from around the NHL. Streak snaps. The playoffs looming. Let's get right into it. Your Locked On Fantasy Hockey. Your daily podcast on fantasy hockey. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Happy Saturday, everybody. Welcome back inside the lab to the Saturday special Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast. I'm joined, as always, by my esteemed co-host, Mr. Steele Roden. And on this side of the microphone, it's your boy, Big Flip Livingstone. Thank you so much for all the everydayers holding us down, making us your first listen every single day. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get 200 bucks in bonus bets. With any winning $5 bet, that's 200 bucks. If your bet wins, visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. Giddy up, Steel. You and I love doing Saturday specials every once in a while because there's things to be discussed. And you and I have been all over the map this season, fantasy, bets. But right now, things are happening. So we're going to take a look at all the news roundup very quickly. Postseason tickets punched, stars, hurricanes, Bruins, Panthers, they're in. But also some streak snap. Nathan McKinnon's home point streak snapped. The Predators hadn't not gotten a point steal in six weeks. That streak is also snapped, but also a little bit of an interesting angle here with Fedotov for the Philadelphia Flyers, a goalie coming in from Russia. I'm going to talk about that very quickly, and we're going to look at the bottom of the barrel. What are the worst teams in the NHL? Have the best shot at bouncing back next season. Saturday's bets, we got lots to get to, Steel. Right over to you. I don't know where you want to start. Maybe these Nashville Predators very quickly because all of a sudden they were on the outside looking in and now they're very comfortably holding down that number one Western wildcard spot. Yeah, very comfortably. And uh, yeah, very big, very tough loss against the Arizona Coyotes who have already yeah. been eliminated, I believe, from contention. Yep. Uh, we pretty much knew they weren't going to make the playoffs about two months ago. Yeah, uh, But yeah, I mean, what, what an absolute run from the Nashville Predators. I mean, we've seen a lot of game winning streaks over the top, over the course of this season even last season as well so Nashville Predators got hot at the right time um hopefully Most this definitely. this 8 4 loss to the Arizona Coyotes doesn't cool them off Philip Forsberg still gets he gets uh, his 41st goal of the season Roman Yossi Gustav Nyquist just one yep. of those bad games against a bad team you know it was True. bound to happen for this big club night right from now, Logan Cooley too yeah, Logan Cooley had a big night. Josh Doan had a couple of assists as well. So that's another guy goes. like you mentioned that we got to keep an eye on uh, over the course of the remaining uh, uh, remainder of the regular season. Yep. But look, they're 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 holding on to that first wild card spot. Actually, the Vegas Golden Knights are now third in the uh, Pacific Division. The yep. Kings fall down after their loss to the Oilers last night. But ninety points for the Nashville Predators. They, I mean. There's they they have a chance to get into the top three of the uh, central division right now. There's no question. They're not out of the points, question. Yeah, they're four points back of the Winnipeg Jets. The Jets are four, five, and one in the last ten. So mm -hmm. I mean th that's clearly a possibility. But again, I mean, do you want to go up against the uh, do you want to go up against the Dallas Stars or do you want to go up against the Colorado Avalanche? I mean, again, pick your poise. It's yeah. not going to be good. It's not going to be good either way. I'm excited for us to take a look. Once all of these matchups finally get solidified, which is only a matter of days away now, you and I will break down every single playoff series, X factors, our predictions, bets, who wins and how many games, and I'm fired up for that. But when I look at the National Predators, and you know, you look at some teams here, like you, I mentioned the Florida Panthers, they punched their postseason ticket with yeah. a loss. I think they have five out of six games they've dropped now. You never want to back into the postseason. Everyone knows this in any sport. You want to be going in there on some kind of heater, even if it's just good vibes. And the Nashville Predators definitely have that right now. They're also still 22-11-3 away from home. Another good sign of a postseason team, ability to win away from your own barn. So the Nashville Predators are a pesky little team. And look, you mentioned it. 
when your top guys go, you win. Forsberg, you mentioned it. Yossi, you mentioned it. These guys have had killer seasons, and they are big reasons why so the National Predators have as well. Now, if you don't mind, speaking of ups and downs, the Philadelphia Flyers have been a team that we got to give them props because they basically yeah. came out of the – well, they did come out of the basement in the Metro <laughs> to hold down that third spot for most of the season. It's slipping right now, Steele. As we stand here Saturday, Washington is one point back with two games in hand on Philly. Those two games might end up being huge. So this angle with Fedotov, Ivan Fedotov, and let me give you a little bit of background here. He is a 27-year-old goaltender steal. He finally joins this team after being drafted in the 2015 NHL draft. But let me hit you with this, and this is why I think this could be actually important for them, given Carter Hart uh, is dealing with what Carter Hart is dealing with. They've had flux in the cage. Let me yeah. hit you with this. He is actually showed out in this in the KHL and that's what I wanted to bring up he was the best goalie in the KHL in 2021-22 he had a 2.00 goals against average and a 920 save percentage in 26 games then he carried that same team to the Gargarin Cup which he went 16 and 6 in the postseason with a 937 save percentage that's not the NHL but those are good numbers and they're definitely good enough for me to have a look at him in your any kind of pool just because how thin the goaltending market is. Do I go there and add him right away? I don't think so, but I have my eyes double peeled because I have a feeling they're going to give this guy a bit of an opportunity here down the stretch. Samuel Urson has been struggling. Yeah, he has been struggling. A lot of the load, a lot of the pressure has been on his shoulders, obviously, with Carter Hart's absence. Uh, uh, this Philadelphia yeah. Flyers team, like you said, is slipping right now. They're three, five, and two in their last 10 games. And I mean, two point or one point up on the Washington Capitals. You got five points on the New York Islanders as, as uh -huh. they have two games in hand. So this is going to come down to a very close race in the Metropolitan. Even hey, yep. even the Atlantic Division, Tampa Bay is four points back after a big win from the Maple Leafs. But mm -hmm. anything can happen right now. Uh, yes. I think we I think we know most of the teams that are going to be in the playoffs, but the, the, the uh, positioning of them could change uh, fast. Most definitely. And just, you know, to close the point here, we're going to head to break. We're going to talk about the bottom feeding teams in the NHL that have the best shot at bounce, bouncing back next season and Saturday's bets. There's a loaded board steal. Your boys finished off the week pretty hot, and I've got three awesome picks for tonight. Stay tuned for that. I just want to close this point on this Russian goaltender, Ivan Fedotov. If he does go in here and he proves out and he shows that he can actually play at the NHL level, and I believe he is still under contract, there aren't enough goaltenders to go around steal ever. So you don't want to miss an opportunity in the fantasy realm to perhaps get under the radar and snag a name that others aren't paying attention to. However, today you got to be paying attention to our friends at eBay Motors. Today's episode is brought to you by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is what also keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance from superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts to fit your number one ride or die, you'll always find what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. With eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. All the parts you need at the prices you want. It's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that W. Keep your ride or die live at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay Guaranteed Fit, only available to our U.S. customers. And thank you so much for making the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast your first listen every single day. Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV? Have to turn down the volume with all that shouting? Make, make the switch to Locked On Sports Day, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel programmed for your every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked On Sports Day brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channel app. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every single day. Once again, thank you so much for tuning in for the Saturday special of Flip and I. Continue to hit the subscribe, the follow button, leave a five star review. Yes, uh, sir. Bottom feeding teams, teams that are dead last or hey. right there at the bottom of the NHL standing yep. boards uh, this season, but could potentially uh -huh. bounce back heading to this uh, into next year. I'll, I'll throw it over to you. How many uh -huh. teams do you have? I've got two teams, maybe I've got three. Two. I've got, uh, two. I've got two teams that I feel comfortable talking about and think <laughs> that they can uh, 
make make a little bit of a bounce back next year. I don't know if I feel comfortable talking about <laughs> any of these teams steal. However, I do see one of look, I'll spit it out. The Ottawa Senators have underachieved. They should yeah. not be as bad as they are in the standings, especially given like a, a lot of these other teams. The Sharks don't have as much talent. The Blackhawks aren't even close. Like they don't yeah. have pieces like Shabbat and Sanderson. Are there question marks? For sure. So number one, and I think that's the obvious one, is the Ottawa Senators. And I'll mm-hmm. just kind of leave it at that because, yeah, they've underachieved, but they should be a lot better. So yeah. I'll just leave it at that. But number two, and hit me with your take on this because this one's slightly more bold. But it's the Columbus Blue Jackets. And let me just explain. And I know, shout out to Troy. This is a Troy plug. But I think the likes of Voronkov, uh, yeah. Marchenko. Now, uh, who's that other the other kid? Sure, Vinikov. Uh, Thank you. The other, the three of them and this goalie, Tarasov. I'm intrigued by Daniel Tarasov. I think he's actually going to be an excellent number one goaltender in the NHL. Can't wait for Troy to chime in on this one. But I'll also say the Columbus Blue Jackets have Adam Fantilli, Kent Johnson. They have some very interesting young forwards. And I think if any of those, even one or two, step out to the level of I think they can next year, this Columbus Blue Jackets team, then you mix in Boone Jenner. Don't forget about Johnny Goudreau. They might actually be tough to deal with offensively. Defensively, that's going to be a whole other story. But I could see this Columbus Blue Jackets team being pesky to deal with next season. See, that's the team where I wanted to put them in, but I wasn't <laughs> sure if I should just because of – It is bold. And and I do agree with you, you know, with Voronkov, Chinnikov, Marchenko. Chinnikov, uh, the yeah, Russians yeah. have been very, very good for them this season. Uh, again, first year, second year into the NHL. They've dealt with a lot of injuries on the blue line. Wierenski, a few other guys. Obviously, yeah. Adam fentilli has been out for half the season. Yeah. Goaltending, Merzlikens has been struggling the entire yeah. season because he doesn't have much help in front of him. Mm-hmm. I want to put them in so bad, but what worries me is that Johnny Goudreau is not the same player anymore. It's true. He just it's isn't. Bad. And it's it bad. seems like, it honestly just seems like, at times, the team doesn't care. And it goes right through him. And, and that's very why, good I, why I left them off for this. But I, I'm right there with you. Respect I want to put them in so bad, yeah. uh, especially with, you know, the conversations we've had. Troy, yeah. leaving the comments on the channel. We see <laughs> it. We see what this team uh, can do potentially. Uh-huh. Um, but, yeah, Johnny Goudreau is a big reason for me leaving them off right now. It's and a good point, just, though, Steele. His energy just, does seem yeah, to kind of permeate the like, rest yeah, of the team. It just seems like he doesn't really care on a yes. nightly basis. And, yep, and bad energy. along to the other guys, like Ken Johnson has just not lived up to what he could be right now. In his career. Too. He's been injured, yeah. But even just like the few I hear, years I hear, I hear he's you, been I hear in you. the I NHL. So sure. I, 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 I'm right there, but – I got to see what they maybe do for the rest of the uh, regular season and going into the off season, maybe change yeah. some things up. I want to touch on the Ottawa senators, obviously. Cause Please, right yeah, I left you. that one for you. We, we both had expectations, high expectations for this team. I even think I might've said they were maybe a wild card team. I think um, we both did. Yeah. We might've both said that they were a wild card team and, and clearly a down year for almost every single player. Like, Tim yeah. Stutzla had 39 goals last year. He only has 18. He might not even get to 20 Yeesh. this year. That's that's atrocious. That the is points are down for Stutzla, Kachuk, Giroux, Batherson, uh, Sanderson. The only guy that I've been pre I mean, I, I really like Brady Kachuk, obviously. Yeah. The only course. guy that's really stood out to me, and he hasn't even played half the season, is Shane Pinto. Guy's been absolutely right. stellar for the Ottawa yeah. Senators, and I can't wait to see yep. him in a full a full season for the Ottawa Good Senators point. as well. You're on fire I, over there, by the way. I, I, thank you. I really appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, uh, so with the Ottawa Senators, I I don't know if they're going to buy out Jonas Corposalo. I think they probably should after the mm. season that he's put up. But I mean, speaking of maybe, atrocious, maybe they run it back with him. Maybe he can bounce back as Ugh. well with along with the team. And as yeah. as much as uh, as much as Ottawa Senator fans aren't going to admit this and they will never admit this. They yeah. definitely miss Alex to bring it right now. Alex yeah. to bring it was a huge case. Like they almost, they, they did very sure. well last year. And so I know they have uh, some a sour taste left in their mouth when Alex to bring it wanted out and he traded to Detroit, but mm. it is what it is at this point. They're never going to admit it, but they definitely miss Alex to bring its presence. Mm. I've got one more team. Yeah. Who else you got? Also coming from the Eastern Conference. Yeah, the Western Conference bottom feeders. Yeah. Just like, a little side note. The Ducks, Blackhawks, and San Jose Sharks. They're write-offs. 
absolute that is, write-offs. That is really bad. And just for context, because I was just noticing this, so you think the Columbus Blue Jackets, 58 points in dead last in the East, have a minus 60 goal differential. You're like, oh, my God, that's awful. Scroll down to the San Jose Sharks, <laughs> minus 135. Blackhawks, minus 99. And the Ducks, a negative 84 goal differential. That's just a little stat for the head tops. Yeah, and that's very <laughs> – I mean, that's just a little – That doesn't even make sense. I thought that was an error. Uh, it might be. Who knows? That probably is. <laughs> uh, but my last team in the Eastern Conference, I just want to talk about them real quick because even though they are one of the bottom-feeding teams, I've seen a lot of uh, bright spots with their team this this season. Um, the Montreal Canadiens. Uh, I think we need to talk Sneaky. about them a little bit. Sure. Nick Suzuki is right there at, at this point in his career where we can probably start having a conversation about him being a star in the NHL. Agreed. Uh, he's having his best season yet. Uh, 69 points, just pulling up the stats right now, but Thank 69 you, points, uh, 69 points in 72 games, career high, 30 goals. He's got 39 assists. He's one more assist from tying his career high. Uh, but he's got last year. He had 66. Po- I'm just going to go on a yearly basis. First two yep. years, 41 points, third year, 61 points, fourth year, 66, fifth year, 69. He's gotten better every single season. He's yep. reaching career highs right now. Uh, he, it's the first time in his career he's above 53% in the face-off circle. Also the first Huge. time he's above 50% Huge. in the face-off circle. Yep. Uh, Uri Slavkovsky, big surprise this season. I know he was the first overall pick and, and point. injuries and whatnot, but he's been very good for them coming since on, yep. you know, midway of the season. Um, I think I've mentioned this before as well. I don't believe Cole Caulfield is going to be the goal scorer oh, in the here NHL. We go. Like, oh, well, let, let me say, like, I don't <laughs> believe that he's going to be the goal scorer in the NHL like a lot of people think he's going to be. I think he's going to be a heck of a player. I think he's going to be one of the studs for the Montreal Canadiens. But yeah. I've said this before too. I see his ceiling as a Mitch Marner type of player, a guy that can score 30 goals, but he's more of a playmaker. He's going to be feeding his teammates. He's going to be setting them sure, up. Yeah. That's what I see Cole Caulfield as. And he's proving it this season. Uh, That's true. He's proving it this season as well. Let me pull Cole Caulfield stats up. I right got him right here. 20 goals, 35 assists. 20 goals, 35 assists. And this and I was I was doing a little comparison with Mitch Marner. Very similar starts to their careers. First couple Ooh. of seasons in the NHL, 20 goal mark, 25 goal mark but it's the apples. It's the assists that rack up the point production from him. He's got 35 Mm. assists compared to 10 last year, 20 the year before that. He's at his career high 55 points uh, in 72 games. He loves to shoot the puck, obviously, but he's got a 7.4 shooting percentage. I know last year was 16 and a half, but I I do think he's going to be a good goal scorer in this league. I just think he's more of a playmaker and that's more of his ceiling and trajectory for me. But uh, with this Montreal Canadiens team, I think they need to maybe shed a little bit of uh, shed some contracts. Like Brendan Gallagher is just an absolute bust. Uh, mm. uh, he's not. Yeah. He's, a, he's a he's a he's a fourth line. That's grinder a tough one for sure. He's not a second liner. Uh, for me, Alex Newhook. He's not a second line center either. They need to figure out the top six forward group to get a little bit more stability, some veteran presence in there because it is mm. it is a very young team. I think Alex Newhook needs to be moved down to the third line center position. They need to fill someone in for that second line. I love Marty St. Louis. I love what they're doing in yeah. the cage with Sam Montembeau. And is it, it's Primo, right? Is it Katie? Yeah, Primo. Primo. Uh, Primo. I, I like that combination. I like what they're doing. The needle is pointed in the right direction. I don't know about where their pipeline is in terms of talent. I would like to have a little bit more of a dig into that to see, like, do yeah, they we'll have... have to look into the prospects. Let's take a look into that angle. Maybe we'll they got a lot of draft these. picks, too. They have a lot of draft picks. Love that. And the fact that Cole Caulfield is five foot seven also blows my <laughs> mind because he is uh, still, I think he's going to, anyway, let's leave all of these takes for the off season. <laughs> We're going to have lots of time to talk about it. Don't disagree with you. Those are the bottom feeding clubs that have the best shot at bouncing back next season. We got bets coming up right around the break, right around the break. Indeed. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel. It's March Madness, baby. Say goodbye to Busted Brackets because FanDuel lets you bet on every single game of the tournament. Whether you're betting on a big upset or a number one seed, which we've seen plenty of times so far this March. Time to go dancing, go toe-to-toe on America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets if your first $5 bet wins. 
That's 200 bucks to use on point spreads, money lines, player props, whatever you want. You can even pick who's going to win it all. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and bet on college hoops until they cut down those nets. And thank you so much for making the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast your first listen every single day. Continue to hit the subscribe, the follow button, leave a five-star review. We appreciate all that love and support you show us Monday through Friday. Yes, Flip, sir. We're going to show some love to them over the weekend with the Saturday Spash mm. Easter weekend. Happy Easter out there to all your families. Happy Easter. Uh, big Saturday game board over here, though. Lots of games, yes. lots of early games as well. 14 over games. Steel, over I to think. you, my friend. What's your first pick of the night? First of all, I'm hyped. I'm fired up. First pick. Bruins or Bruins, Sabres, <laughs> Leafs, Sabres, Leafs. This is how fired up I am. I'm looking at way too many games. Sabres and Leafs. Let me say this. Number one, there's a there's this illness going through the Toronto Maple Leafs right now. Austin Matthews was sick the other night. He almost didn't play against uh, who did they just let who they against the Capitals. He almost didn't play. So there's some guys that are sick. There's also they were out three regulars on the blue line against Washington Steel. The point I'm trying to get at here is. I think this is all the makings of a high-scoring game. The Sabres have been involved in a bunch of crooked number games. And how about six of the last eight between these two Eastern Conference foes over the number? All of those injuries on the blue line. I think the Leafs are going to let a couple of softies in, perhaps. That's the angle I'm going with, Steel. I'm really loving the over in this one. So give me the over six and a half. That's my first pick of the night. I like the pick. I like the pick. And I'm definitely <laughs> going to be, I'm, I'm including that into my parlay, but I've got three picks and I've got three puck line, baby. I'm going back Ooh. to the puck line guru thing over here. I also okay. got an over for one of these games as well, but the first pick Hit Panthers me. on the puck line against the Red Wings. First game of Saturday uh, of the Saturday board, seven time, seven times the Panthers have won by two or more goals and they've won nine out of the last 10. So I'm wow. going Panthers puck line against the Red Wings, a team that just clinched a playoff spot, a team that is fighting for first place in the Atlantic Division. They've dominated the Red Wings. That's my first pick. Okay. Second okay. pick, and I'm actually going to throw this in there with it, Oilers on the puck line against the Anaheim Ducks. Let me just get this up real quick. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, yeah. six, seven, eight. No, they've owned Eight them. times. Eight times they've won by two or more goals. I'm also going to throw in the over six and a half. Because eight times it's been over six and a half in the last Ooh, I 10 like games. those. I Oilers like those. puck line over six and a half against the Anaheim Ducks. Going to absolutely hit it out of the park on Saturday. Mm. Last pick of the night. I'm with you with the over six and a half in this Leafs matchup because I'm also going to take the Leafs on the puck line against Whoa. the Sabres. It is bold. I know they've been a little, uh, Hello. A little, a little sketchy against the Buffalo Sabres at times, but I'm Hello. feeling the puck line. I'm feeling the dogs right now. Big win okay. against Washington again. Puck line, Panthers, Oilers, puck line, Leaf, puck line, and the over six and a half in that Ducks Oilers game. That is a whole lot of puck line <laughs> steel. And you got some cojones I'm on your I'm feeling it. I'm feeling because it. Because the Florida Panthers only have three regulation wins in the last 10. However, I'm not going to disagree with those head to head numbers. I also just don't know how to diagnose this Detroit Red Wings team when it comes to betting. They seem to pooch me every time I bet against them and every time I bet on them. It's just one of those squads that this season has not been good. So I'm just going to stay away from that one altogether. Two more picks, including my lock of the night, which uh, you may have heard from me once or twice, Steele, but that's because the Pittsburgh Penguins are playing the Columbus Blue Jackets. So we'll get there in a second. The New York Islanders are on the road into Tampa Bay. Number one, over the last five or six seasons, Tampa Bay has been one of the best home teams to play against. Oh, yeah. You go into that barn, it's rocking. They rarely get embarrassed. It happens. But anyway. The New York Islanders don't have it. I know that's been a team you and I have talked about a lot. To me, and this is just my take, three, six, and one in the last 10 at this time of year is telling me they don't have it. So yeah. I'm going to go Tampa Bay at home on the money line. You're going to probably have to take a little bit of juice there. But let me just bring up this number. Right now it's at minus 180. I'm okay with that. Tampa has points in eight of their last nine games against the New York Islanders. Give me the bolts at home against the Isles and my lock of the night. The old faithful baby. He had two <laughs> assists against the Columbus Blue Jackets on Thursday night. He is closing in on a thousand assists for his career. I believe he's four back of a thousand steal. Sidney Crosby, anytime <laughs> assist. And I'll finish it off with this in his career against the Columbus Blue Jackets. In 40 games, 39 assists for Sid. Give me my baby, Sidney Crosby, anytime <laughs> assist. That's my lock of the night. 
going back to your boy, Sidney Crosby, anytime assist against the Columbus Blue Jackets. Got to do it. For the Saturday Spash, make sure you hammer all of them down into a parlay. Thank you so much for making the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast your first listen every single day. Once again, go check out Locked On Sports Day's YouTube channel, the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. They are here for you 24-7 with the hottest sports stories of the day with local experts of Locked On, plus the national shows covering every single league. So make sure you go check it out. Go subscribe. Also, you can find it on the free Amazon Fire TV channel app. So make sure you check that out too. Once again, thank you so much for tuning in for today's Saturday special episode with Flip and I. Have a great day. Enjoy your weekend out there, Easter weekend for that matter. Good luck with your bets tonight, and we shall see you back here again on Monday. Happy Easter, everybody.